Doom Eternal is a game with an incredibly high skill ceiling. At whatever point you are, there is always a new skill to discover, learn, and master. With id's upcoming horde mode coming any minute now, it's the perfect time to start pushing yourself to learn new tricks. Thinking back to when I first learned the correct way to PB Sticky Bomb Quick Swap from Toyota, I felt inspired to discuss how the brain learns to get good at Doom Eternal, so let's get right into it. Firstly, there are two kinds of intelligences when it comes to knowing how to play a video game. Crystallized intelligence regards simple facts and information, such as how much health each enemy has, and what kind of weapon combos can put each enemy into a glorical state. This kind of knowledge simply increases linearly with experience in the game. The other kind of intelligence is called fluid intelligence, and this regards our problem solving, decision making, and general adaptability. Fluid thinking is generally divided into two systems, the effortful system 2 and the automatic system 1. When you're first learning a skill, you may be mentally noting what you need to do. In the PB Sticky Bomb Quick Swap example, it's to fire your gun and weapon swap at the same time. This would be an example of the Type 2 system, which itself consists of many brain regions acting in parallel. For example, your premotor cortex is involved in planning behavior, like when you plan to meat hook onto a fodder before you chainsaw it to get that extra armor drop. Or another example is how your prefrontal cortex chunks different pieces of the behavior together into one cohesive action, such that switch to weapon, adjust your aim, and use weapon mod gets compressed into the easier to learn command of meat hook onto an enemy. Learning new skills also requires areas associated with the automatic system 1. The subcortical basal ganglia is heavily involved in automatic behavior and during learning provides your cortex with feedback signals about whether an action you took was successful or not. This training signal reinforces the behaviors that lead to improvement so that when you can finally pull off Silar's new tech, you got the basal ganglia to thank for that. And on the topic of new techs, if you ever want help learning how to reach Doom Eternal skill ceiling, there's a great Discord that you can catch me in sometimes called the Immortal Realm Discord, which has really talented coaches for both mouse and keyboard and controller to help you with the process of learning new skills. But how does a learned skill become automatic? What happens when you no longer have to consciously think about the buttons to press or even the specific action to take? What allows you to instantly shoot those weak points without even having to consciously plan for it like you did when you first started playing? Well, most of you probably know that the neurons in your brain communicate with each other by releasing chemicals called neurotransmitters into small junctions between the neurons called synapses. But what's interesting is that these synapses form and unform all the time. The ability of neurons to create and destroy synapses is called neuroplasticity. In its simplest form, neurons that fire together, wire together, and this is called Hebbian plasticity. So every time you see a blood maker and switch to the precision bolt, the connections strengthen between the neurons that are active when you see a blood maker and the neurons that are active when you switch to the precision bolt. In the last Neuroscientist Explains video, I talked about the brain as a dynamical system, which to grossly oversimplify, means that you can imagine the activity of a network of neurons kind of like a ball rolling down a twisty turny road on a hill, where neurons activity goes up and down, just like the ball goes left and right. But it's all about going down a specific trajectory to get to a certain location at the bottom of the hill. Well. Strengthening synaptic connections through repetition basically makes the dynamical system of the brain travel down the hill faster, which equates behaviorally to you reacting faster to those blood makers and weak points. So that explains how our brain connects things faster, but how does the brain learn precise timing? For example, in Silar's quick lock-on tech, the sequence of precision bolt rocket lock-on must be performed incredibly quickly. Additionally, with certain weapon swaps and tricks like the Marauder Foot Ballista, timing becomes so integral that the combat literally becomes a Doom dance. Well, spoilers, but we actually still don't fully understand how the brain does timing. 
It remains an ongoing question in neuroscience, whether it's completely done by the aforementioned dynamical system trajectories or by something else, such as specific networks of neurons called central pattern generators, since they produce flexible rhythms of firing, and perhaps certain behaviors get phase-locked onto the intrinsic oscillations of these networks. There's a lot of evidence for many different theories, but what is clear is that as your new tricks like the foot ballista and quick lock-on get consolidated into your playstyle, more of the cognitive workload gets offloaded to the subcortical areas like the cerebellum. Eventually, you'll be cruising through marauders and possessed barons in your race car on complete autopilot. And interestingly, as behaviors become more automatic, you actually see a decrease in the activity of many brain regions. This makes sense in the context of less activity corresponding to less perception of mental effort, but why does less brain activity correlate to better performance? Well, there's a few possible answers, such as more efficient computing through synchrony between brain areas, but one interpretation I really like could come from a popular theory in neuroscience right now called predictive processing, which posits that the brain does mostly one thing, prediction. In the predictive processing framework, taking an action results from the brain predicting the action has already been taken. In this framework, the prediction neurons largely inhibit brain activity, and most of the activity in the brain actually corresponds to prediction error, which gets resolved by changes in prediction, or for the action example, changes in the muscles themselves. From this lens, to oversimplify things a bit, once you've gotten really good at those PB stickies, there's simply less need for precision with regards to your brain's prediction of that behavior, and thus, there's less perception of mental effort and less prediction error. So I think that's enough for today, let's recap what we've discussed. Firstly, the effortful System 2 engages in several brain regions which each have unique roles in the process of fluid intelligence, including planning, providing feedback to learn from, and chunking information. Secondly, the automatic nature of the Doom Dance arises from synaptic plasticity strengthening connections to make information flow faster and offloading processing to subcortical areas. Additionally, one fascinating possibility for how we handle the precise timing of the beat of the Doom Dance may arise from networks whose activity naturally oscillates called central pattern generators. And lastly, we often see a decrease in brain activity once we get good at something, which too has many possible explanations, one coming from the perspective that the brain is a prediction machine, which would say that as our use of the tech gets more reliable, the brain's prediction gets better at inhibiting its input, leading to less prediction error. Alright, thanks for staying till the end. If you've made it this far, I'd love to hear your feedback. These videos have been getting a bit more complex, and I'm wondering whether I should go back to sticking to the more digestible concepts of cognitive science, or to continue diving deeper into the nitty gritty neuroscience. Another question is whether I should spend more time breaking down high level concepts, or keep these videos on the shorter side. All your feedback is greatly appreciated, and if you'd like to reinforce these kinds of videos on YouTube, consider sharing it around and all that good stuff the algorithm values. Till next time, stay curious.